Hello! Today is a really nice rainy day. It's cloudy and it feels sort of gloomy in a way, but yet it's, um, it's a good day for me to share with you uh, some of the self-help things that you can do. The reason I decided to do it like that today is because I've had a lot of clients come in over the past couple of weeks that have things going on with their hands and their elbows, their knees, their swollen ankles and things like that and I've had some bruising coming in as well so I thought it would be a good idea to just show you some of the things you can do because a lot of these aches and pains that people have are deal with the um, alignment issue at a very subtle level so sometimes by just learning how to manipulate the joints a little bit you can get some relief and that's very helpful to do so I thought I would just show you a little bit of that today. So with that, I'll get going and I'm going to start with showing some things on the hands and elbows. The thumb and the hand and the wrist are something that people do have a lot of problems with, particularly with a lot of keyboard work and that sort of thing. And I myself have had some problem with this thumb. I work with my hands and have for a long time. And so the fact that my hands are still working as good as they are is 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 something to be said for taking care of your hands. But this joint on the thumb, for a while there it was had gotten so painful back on this farthest joint, right where it's closest into the wrist, that I thought that I was going to lose my hands and not be able to really work much more because I couldn't lift anything, I couldn't grab anything, it was just really bad. But I started to work with my hands on the joints and working um, to see what was going on. Of course there was probably some inflammation in there. So what I do with the hands, and um, I do have a lot of people come in with it, so I, I'll show you how I work on my hands and then you can do it with yours because I don't have another person's hands here to do it today. So I start out by, um, this is where the pain was, so I'll just it's not there anymore. It's, it's, it's fine now. It doesn't hurt at all. But I, I'm going to kind of wrap my hand around and get my fingers down here to this joint. The thumb is going to kind of curl underneath. And then I'm just going to hold on to that joint, have it be in a straight line there, and then hone in, grab a hold of it, and just let my fingers sink carefully in with not a whole lot of pressure. And I already feel some things with the muscles. Um, and then begin to like rotate the joint back and forth. I'm exaggerating it a little bit so you can see it, but it's a forward like toward me and then away from me is where I'm rotating it. Now the joint is coming together there, but it's a little bit of like a little stretch. It doesn't move in this sideways direction naturally, but it, there's enough play there because it does, the joint does move in several directions. So I just do that and I'm feeling some unwinding even now because I work with my hands back here on the muscular part of the pad of the thumb. Then I would work out into the next joint and just rotate that. Now I've demonstrated some of this with other hands, but I wanted to show you how you can do it to yourself. And here you're going to be rotating and as you can probably see it a little bit better, the rotation, and then working it out to these joints. And as you see that, you can might be able to see some of the musculature moving there. Then bending the joint and bending it in here, and then taking it in a lot of different positions here. Now when I pull down this way, I feel a little tension through here. So I'm going to bend this joint up and down to give a little bit more range of motion. And then rotate some more and then work it itself and now it actually I wasn't in pain but this does feel looser and a little more open. So you can go through and do that with all the fingers as well and I'm not going to be doing too much. You just want to make sure that you're grabbing at the joint. Now this one you'll have your thumb underneath and two fingers and that's the way that all the fingers will work. So you'll move these joints back and forth and then working out same thing and do it with every every joint just to get it loose because that'll loosen it and then move them around move your hand around in different ways open it up also press the hands back so you're putting the fingers together and stretching the fingers and the thumb trying to get that together 
just you don't have to worry about the palms just get the fingers together there and no I'm not making any symbols this is just stretching so don't anybody read into that if you know what I'm talking about and just work it that way and then move the hands around a little bit um, just to keep them moving okay it's very important then you can go to the palm of the hand and just uh, the fingers run up this way there's you know when there's a lot of flesh on it you can't see it but the bone is running all the way up so you can just run along the bone in between the bone and along the bone which lines up with the finger and in between the bone and along the bone and in between the bone and then in the, the fleshy part here of the of the thumb and the finger and now you can use a fair amount of pressure here this is a little more massagey and it feels really good the other thing that feels really good is to get your finger inside of the fingers between them and rotate like so it kind of gives a little friction in there but that's another spot that feels really good and even into the thumb okay now now that the hand so it feels so much more open than it did when we started I do wake up with stiff hands sometimes it depends on the weather but sometimes my hands are very stiff so what I do to alleviate that is the first thing I do in the morning is I go to take some of the redux molecules and I find that two to three ounces of that in the morning uh, as soon as I get up will alleviate a lot of that stiffness now there still is some soreness that I can feel like a little bit of discomfort but the fact that uh, that I'm the age that I am and my hands are still working really good it says that there's something that I'm doing that is that is right because most people who work with their hands pretty much don't have their hands after they've done 30 some years of daily work with them so uh, just little tips here that you can pay attention to throw away ones that don't match their work for you and work with the ones that do now I'm moving into the wrist a little bit here because wrists are also another thing that's a problem. We have a lot of carpal tunnel. I see a lot of carpal tunnel. And that is um, a pain that comes here. The hand tends to make a tunnel. So it's important to keep that spread and get that spread open as much as possible and working outward as well as on the carpal tunnel stuff you want to work up the outside of the arm um, on the muscles going up the forearm my hands are working very well for um, all of the work that they've given me over the years so thank you so much for watching that part and we'll go on to the next part where it's, I'm going to show you about a bruise with bruises uh, bruises are something that should never be worked into with massage therapy when you have a bruise particularly if it's a dark purple one or a deep deeper bruise because you can create a blood clots with that so you don't want to work on a bruise or close to a bruise um, if you're doing massage therapy I get a, a number of people from post-op and they are very bruised and it's deep bruise and I have figured out a way to work on bruises that help them move out with using the lymphatic system. The way that I've discovered this was I had a gentleman come in who had fallen off of a ladder and his wife brought him in and he he fell off a ladder and he landed and on his rear on the side and a little bit on the on the glute muscle he had a bruise about this big and it was purple black dark the whole thing and I just looked at it like what am I supposed to do with this because I, I knew I couldn't work in it at all so they they'd come and they trusted me and they wanted me to do something to help them so I thought well I can't go deep so let me just see if I can move the fluid because I did no lymphatic work so I began to do the technique I'm going to show you because I happen to have a little bruise on my arm and I started to move this and I started to watch this bruise turn lighter and lighter and then there would be like a space in a little hole where it was flesh again and I would be rubbing my eyes like I think I'm seeing things I don't think this is really happening so I worked it a while and then after the time was about up I called his wife back in and she came in and I said does this look any different and she said oh my gosh what did you do and it was like I don't know what I did I just did something that I felt like I was told from my heart and my brain and I logically and 
things thought through it so I wouldn't cause any harm to him. And I showed her how to do this technique and she did it and they came back about two days later and his bruise was completely gone. It just had a little green ring on the very outer edge. The inside was kind of a yellow. It wasn't completely gone, but the amount of bruising that was, you know, gone was just, it, it was just amazing how much it had changed in just two days because a bruise like that usually takes a while to move out of the area. So I wanted to tell you that because this is something that I don't know anybody else that works like this with the bruise. It's kind of, you know, um, information that I have discovered myself. So I'm giving you some information that is helpful for you um, if you were to go to school or any kind of training and sort of this sort of thing. It would probably cost you a lot of money to find out this kind of this private um, modality here. But I want to give it to you freely. And with that said, I just want to also say that, you know, if I do things that, that give you value, I want to give it out freely. But both I and Gus have very busy schedules because we are keeping ourselves going. So if you do get value out of it, it's a good idea to make some exchange in some way because that's how energy works better. And you'll find that the freer you are as a give and take kind of a society, we can move into a different kind of a mode. And I can talk about that at another time. But I just wanted to mention that this is kind of like, um, you know, my personal little secret modality, but I'm now sharing it with the world. But I do want you to understand that bruises are something that you need to be very careful about. And this work has got to be done extremely light on the skin so that you don't cause harm to anybody. So I want to make that very clear. So what happened to my arm is I was stuffing in um, folded up boxes into my garbage and I, I was pushing one down. It was very tight and I got a, a brush of a bruise on my arm. It just about went away. I actually had two of them. It was just about gone and then I dropped something and it went underneath a low drawer and I reached under at it and as soon as I got to this part of my arm, I hit the drawer and it rebruised it. So I have been working on it, but I've been saving it for the video. And it's not that big of a bruise, but it is a deep bruise. It's, it's a dark bruise. And I have been working on it a little bit. So I'm just going to show you the, um, the technique. And I don't know how much we'll see it change because uh, it's hard to see. You can see it when your eyes are a little more trained for it, at least when you're watching it change. So anyway, what you do is you have to be sure that you're going in the direction of the lymphatic system. So that I'm going to leave for your homework. You have to check that out yourself. Um, but you take very, very light with your finger, feather light, and you just brush it in the direction of the lymph. And you just keep doing this and doing this and doing this. And I do this on a lot of surgeries, post-op surgeries. And the amount of bruising that goes away so quickly, I, I get reports from the, the client that the doctor has said that they're very happy with what they see uh, because the bruising has gone away so quickly. So I'm just brushing and you can maybe see some coloration changing in the skin around. It's very light. It's, it's not uh, hardly even moving the skin, but because there's broken little capillaries under there and all of that, it, we're getting it to move out with the fluid interstitially. Um, maybe it can get back into the lymph system. I don't really know how that works, but but I'm just going to keep on doing this. Here's where the brunt of that first um, and second scrape was. It was more on this side of my arm. Plus, I noticed that I'm, I do tend to bruise easy with little bumps um, simply because um, of my age but I notice that they heal very quickly. So, um, you know, you're, you just get a little weaker, but I'm not really concerned that much with being in ill health. I pay a, a lot of attention to what's going on. So anyway, there, I think that you might be able to see a little bit of change happening. Um, this works best on the deep purple bruises. And it takes time. Um, when people come in post-op, 
Oftentimes I'm working a good part of an hour on the bruising along the suture line. So, uh, and it, it just takes time. Plus I'm, it seems like there's a little repair going on with lymphatic vessels that may have been uh, broken. So you just keep rubbing that. And I don't know if you can see much difference to my eyes and I don't have my glasses on, but it looks like it's clearing out in this little hole here a little more and it's changing shape. Oftentimes you'll start to see little threads, which you might be able to see on the outside, little threads starting to run up. And then it seems to just disappear and, you know, be um, absorbed back into the body. Um, and so you can, if you have a bruise that you can get to, then you can just work it and keep doing that for however long you need to. Oftentimes what you'll see is you'll see there's, it's really strange because there's parts of a bruise that are usually a little bit worse than the other parts. And when you start doing this, it kind of moves itself out in, in different ways. It doesn't just totally move. It kind of patchworks its way out. So I'm not, I'm seeing a little bit of change. I don't have my glasses on, but I'm seeing a little bit of change happen. And again, you know, the more your eyes are trained to see the subtle things, the more your hands are trained to see to feel the subtle things, the more information that you'll get. Uh, and I know some people just can't see the difference or can't feel the difference. That's okay, because it took me a number of years to be able to get really uh, proficient at uh, the subtle stuff. So anyway, that's how you can work a bruise. And you can take all your fingers as well and just kind of brush it. And it's, again, it's very, very light. Very, very, very light. Just like you're just, you know, not even, not even as rough as petting a cat or dog. It's just very light. And then, now what's going to happen is as time goes by, this will open up even more. So this little spot in the middle, it looks like there's a little more of a, of a, flesh color there. This was a pretty good little scrape. So this is just um, something I'm showing you. It may look a little different. It, like I say, I can see some changes happening already. And um, you can try it out, see what you think, if it works. If you're a therapist and you have somebody coming in post-op, just remember, you have to brush it in the direction of the lymphatic uh, quadrants. So you can check the other videos for that. It does seem like there is a little bit of a, a lighter avenue coming up the middle of this bruise. But I'm going to leave it like it is there. And I know during out, throughout the day, it's going to lighten even more. So there you have it with a little bruise, a little technique on bruising. Um, do it carefully. Don't cause any pain or any uh, harm to anybody. Do not work heavy into a bruise. Do never work heavy into a bruise. Alrighty, so there's the bruise and I wanted to, next I wanted to show you how you can manage if you have a swollen foot or swollen ankles. I see a lot of swollen ankles, so I thought I'd also show you how you can do some self-help on ankles. I see a lot of swollen ankles and and feet that come in um, and I do lymph work on it which is something that is good to do because you, then you get the full lymph, lymphatic work. But because of my leg incident that I had a while ago, I noticed that when I eat a lot of carbohydrates or sugary stuff and I don't do that very often but it does make this foot swell. It's not swollen now. Um, it was a few days ago so I'm, but I'm going to show you what I do to get it get this foot unswollen because usually when my foot swells it's it's beginning to pit so it has this pitting action where that's where you poke yourself and then there's a, a print a thumbprint or a fingerprint for a while. So um, I did have to, I did have this swelling going on a few days ago and I did work it out and that's what made me think that maybe I should share this with you all. So when 
there's a swollen foot and you have a swollen foot or a swollen ankle, first of all, the hard part is getting down to the foot. So you'll have to figure out how to position yourself somehow. And then the ankle will also be swollen, but it, it does go down into the foot. So what you want to do is you want to start behind here and just kind of pump upward. It's kind of thick in here, and when there's thick fluid, you have to go with a little more pressure, but you're still just pushing it up. And then you can also just kind of open the knee. But uh, just let's just concentrate on this. So you're going around and you're going around in these ankle bones. And what, what you're going to do when it's swollen is get inside of the ankle bone, but you're not going with force. You're, you're still going gently, but you're doing it with enough pressure because there's a pitting going on. So there's a layer of fluid. So you have to kind of get inside of that fluid and deeper in. And then I'll, I'll br pull the fluid, the, I'm skin stretching here and I pull, would be pulling the fluid down. And then what I do when this is happening, I get down to the toes. Now there is, I, I should have waited and, and shown you, and if I get another swollen foot, I'll show you with this real swelling because I start down here and this is another thing that I just figured out. And I use a fair amount of pressure, but I pull everything with a fair amount of pressure up. And what you're going to find is because it's so gelatinous, especially when it's pitting, that it's going to start making a little wall where you'll feel thing. And then there's a wall behind it where all the fluid is. And then you just keep moving up with that. And I might still have some fluid in there. You might be able to see a little. And you move upward. And you're going to find that as you move upward, there's going to be this this big thing of like a wall of water but it's more like a wall of jello and you just keep moving it up and moving it up and moving it up and as you do that and again you're not going in with a harsh pressure you're going in between the bones and you're pumping you're stretching skin stretching which is a technique but you're going down deeper in because you're pitting if you're especially if you're pitting you have to get down into that fluid and then you work into this bone uh, ankle around the ankle and then push that fluid up here and by the time it gets here then it's it's softened enough it kind of melts and then you can just take your hands and just work up the leg and it doesn't matter if you go through clothes on the leg or not and you then you go up under the knee and just do a little flipping of the knee and then you can go back down you may need to repeat it a few times and just push it up push it up push it up and and it's just you it really does feel like you're just moving fluid it's out of the technique that i was trained in because it's a little harder of a of a pressure but it is the only thing that i found that could really take out that swelling when my foot is really really swollen so I just wanted to share that with you because there's a lot of swollen ankles and feet and just doing a little bit of that gives you relief because it does move the fluid. Now, if you can, you can get into a cranial therapist or excuse me, a lymphatic therapist and have a full body lymph work done, which is a good idea because of the nature of the lymphatic system. But this is a good thing just to get some pressure out of the foot to have it feel a little bit better and to just hold yourself over, you know, until you can get to a professional who can help your body come back up with the full system. And then this, this little stuff that you do will hold longer and all of that. So, and again, um, there's other things that may be involved that you might need to do to take swelling out, but that's other stuff you can cover. So this is just just the technical stuff to do to get a little bit of relief in having a, a swollen foot because it, it's not it's painful when it starts to swell and then the rest of the leg will start to swell and it's not a good condition when it starts to swell so with that you can see how that works for you and hopefully you get some result out of it the next thing that i wanted to show you is uh elbows that's another little critical thing that people come in with a lot of elbow pain so I'm going to show you some things with the elbow. The elbows are interesting. Um, it's usually a misalignment is usually what I find with elbow problems. Now, there, there could be more 
Um, but usually things are pretty easy, especially when people come in right away. Um, but there could be other things with the elbow, but usually I find a misalignment. So the elbow joint is back here. There's two kind of two sides. There's, there's different bones. There's two bones that hook into it. So what I do here is I find the, um, the little, there's like little grooves on either side. The inside, the medial side has a deeper groove than the outside. And I just put my fingers in those two grooves and I then I just let the elbow come open a little ways. It's just an easy elbow. It's not completely straight, not tight, and it's not real bent because that's where you get the biggest play in it. And then I just move move my fingers with the, that elbow to help to see if it's aligning. And usually you do get some movement in that elbow. So that's an important part of it is getting making sure that it's aligned because sometimes when you're working with your hands or you fall or you do something you can push that it's a hinge joint you can just get it a little misaligned you know like a door if you're hanging something a little too heavy on a door and then you'll feel some of the um, maybe some of the muscles unwinding a little bit we don't want to pinch it or hold tight with it and then there's some, a couple other things that you want to check with this one. Is One is you want to check the wrist. So a little traction on the wrist there just to pull it down. This is where, you know, two hands is really easier. But you just do a little traction on that. And do it with the intention that you're, that you're putting space in the, in the um, elbow joint itself. So you're just kind of holding it there. And then you can go back to the elbow and feel to see if there's been any any other little um, movements that it might want to do since there's been some traction doing that. Now with the elbow there's also another joint that needs to be addressed to just check um, for alignment and that's up here at the acronium clavicular area. And I'll show you on the skeleton in a minute but it's a joint in here so you want to feel in that joint and make sure that that is aligned as well. And that is you just, again, you find that joint and then you put the fingers on each side. There's little grooves. It's a bump and then there's little grooves. You can kind of feel, when you do this, you can feel the arm lifting um, on the, the outer side. So then you just hold that there and, and let it move around. And sometimes you might want to just let your elbow, um, well, arm, move a little bit with it to see if there's any kind of an alignment issue and this is the two that you want to just kind of check and then check again into the elbow joint a lot of times that's all it is it's a misalignment of those joints and then there's one more joint which is the uh, um, sternoclavicular joint which is the where the attachment of this whole shoulder girdle is right at the sternum and the and the clavicle and that's another joint that is oftentimes misplaced. So you again, you put your fingers right in there and you just wait and you'll feel that kind of wiggle around very slightly, very, very slightly. Let your fingers just follow that movement. Now that's a technique that takes some time to practice, but um, if you just pay attention, you can get it. Anybody can get it if they want to. So you check those, uh, those two joints the elbow and then de uh, decompress a little bit into the wrist and then check the elbow to see how it works. You can also flip the elbow and feel the joint, the, the joint itself. Your arm is straight but it's not tight, locked in and just flip over and back and feel if there's anything going on with this motion, the pronation, supination of the arm and if that feels pretty good and then you feel like you know, more range of motion or no pain or something like that. So that's important to um, pay attention to. A lot of this work is intention. So when you're thinking about what you're doing, think about what you're doing as far as like stretching. If you're stretching to, to give traction, see, visualize with yourself how you're, how everything is stretching at a deep level and how you can see in your image the the joint just opening up enough to give a little bit of space there 
so that you can have a little decompression and so that the joint can breathe. And just doing that with me, it opened up my elbow and I didn't have anything wrong with this elbow. I got the bruise there, but I don't have anything wrong with this elbow, but it does feel like it's much freer just in that little tiny bit that I did. So that should be helpful for you too. And now I want to also remind you, I've done another video about this, but I want to remind you how to drain your sinuses and um, just get some breathing going if you, if you feel stuffy, especially like on cloudy days like today. Up here, this is the acromion clavicular joint. It's right in here, right along there. You can see a little lines coming through. It comes into the scapula and that's the joint that you feel. The elbow has two joints there, two bones that come together. So that, and it also, this guy doesn't move real well. He doesn't articulate, but the, it does go over the top. So your bone moves open and then it crosses. It's like I say, this, the wrist, this, this doesn't have the, the separate wrist bones. But here's where the traction is coming, right there. So you're giving a little pull down, opening up these joints. Here's the, the sternoclavicular joint. You want that lined up because that's lining up the shoulder socket. Oops. And so the shoulder socket will um, be better aligned with the elbow and the wrist. I've done a couple other videos before on draining the, the sinuses and opening up some of the airway passages, but I thought it would be a good time to do it on this video as well. So I'm going to show you again how to drain the, the face and the neck. And um, so let me start. I need to take that off so I can get to the, so I can get to the, uh, the clavicular nodes, which are right underneath the clavicle clavicle are, is this these bones right here. Uh, I take my two index fingers and set it along the clavicle on either side. And then I you want to what you want to do is you want to skin stretch in so it's like you're pulling in but you're not pushing hard. You're just stretching the skin in and then you're letting up and riding riding back. So stretch and ride back. Stretch and ride back. Okay, and then you come up the side of the neck, up, 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 and then back down to rinse it, pulling back into the clavicle, and then up again, and then just keep going here, and then you want to come underneath the jaw. Now the jaw you're going to be pushing back toward the ear, so it's a push, your fingers again, right under the jaw. So the jaw is, the jaw bone is here. You're going to be tucked kind of behind it and you want to skin stretch in. It's the same feeling as on the clavicle and stretch there. There's lymph nodes under there. It's sublingual area. So move it that way. Okay. And then in the center and then you can come down the neck chain here and drain some of that, drain some of that. On both, there's like two neck chains, a front and a back one. Okay, and then you there's a triangle where it drains down center and then back. So you're going to start and just kind of drain around the chin, under the nose, up the nose, and along that triangle. When you get up to the eyes, if you want to open up some of the sinuses by a little bit of repositioning of the nasal bones, you just hold your two fingers in there, engage with the, um, with the bones. You want to meld to the bones. You're not pinching it. You're just melding to the bones. It's kind of an energetic feeling, like a magnet almost. And then you want to pull kind of an arc. So it's kind of an upward and then a curve. And you're going to be opening some of the bones and you might feel some wiggling around. You might feel, sometimes people feel a pop in one of the sinuses, something opened or they start to drain. And then when you do that, you can just come back down that triangle and 
I just kind of brush it away when I'm doing it on myself, but skin stretching a little bit too. And then we're going to go to the side and just push everything back from the cheek under the eyes, kind of pull it that direction. On top of the eyes, pulling it up and around. And then down into the chain again and into here. And then you can go across the forehead the same way, starting out here and working in, skin stretching, and back down. Then you can take your fingers, put one in each ear, but you're just going to you're going to connect to the skin right inside the ear. And then you just take the skin and twist it either way because that's going to give you a little bit of a drainage deep in the ear. So you just want to, it's a twist, but you're holding, it's like you're engaged on that skin. So you're feeling the skin move with your finger. It's a little, takes a, a, a little while to learn what, what to feel for and what to get, but it really does help to open the ears. Now the ears, when they're plugged really deep, that's another whole issue because the there's a, a bone there and there's a lot of stuff inside of that bone. So there's a little bit of an issue there, but if you do that, um, that helps to drain some of it. Also too, as I noticed that with the uh, redux molecules, I have the gel and I if my ears get plugged, I just put a little bit of the gel right on the, um, I don't stick it way down the ear, but just a little bit there. And what that does is it tends to open up and kind of dissolve any, any extra wax or something that might be in there. So there's little tricks like that that you can do to, to really help yourself. And I would like to be able to share a lot of this with you so that you don't have to feel like you're, you know, suffering too much, but you can have the skills to be able to help yourself. Once you have this all open here, if you have a, some upset stomach and you're feeling kind of um, full or anything and just kind of stomach pains, if you go to the cisterna chili, here's the, the ribs are right here. They come up together right here. There's a little spot right here called the cisterna chili. If you just push yourself like up, you're just, it's, it's a little like cistern that holds lymph and so if you go very slowly and just kind of stretch the skin up, but you're feeling a little thing underneath there, you want to be careful because there's a little bone called a xiphoid and you don't want to push on the xiphoid. So it's kind of below the xiphoid. The xiphoid is right where those bones come together at the sternum. So you're below that and then you just kind of pump upward, just pump up a little bit and a little bit. Sometimes you can actually feel the fluid just kind of moving up. But that'll give you a little bit of relief. You know, it's just little help there. It's not going to re resolve a whole lot of stuff, but it'll give you just a little bit of relief. So you could do a little bit there and, and then come back up here and drain here because this is the main drain point. And you could go back down and kind of do a little bit more. And, and you'll find that it, it moves the fluid enough to give you relief because it doesn't take much to move the fluid. It's just that sometimes it gets stuck because there's a lot of overload in the liver. So that that's just some stuff that I wanted to share with you so that you can just keep yourself going and you don't have to feel like you're suffering too much or that you, you're just in a pickle and you can't figure out how to get out and you have this going on. Maybe your ears are plugged, nose is plugged, eyes are watering, which mine do a lot. And you can um, just kind of give yourself a little relief this way. And I think that's going to be very helpful. And it's going to make you feel a little more empowered too, because you don't have to run for something. You can just figure it out yourself. So with that, I want to say thank you so much for watching these little self-help pieces. And I hope that it helps you out to figure it out. And if you have any questions, just send me an email. Uh, go to the website and find my email on there and send me an email with a question and I'll do my best to answer it for you. Thank you so much for viewing the videos. I want to thank you for the likes, the comments, the shares, and the donations. I really appreciate it. Until we see you again, have a great day. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing. And I think there's a little bell up there that you can hit that you'll get a notification every time we post. So if you want to, you can hit that too. 
but thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it.